Relays. Our gold wings are packed with them. But what are they? What do they do? Why do we need them? And how do we fix them? Coming up next on Goldwing Docs. <laughs> Hi, I'm Scott with Goldwing Docs, and I can see my breath in here. My garage heater is not yet heated up my garage. It's one of the coldest days of the year. So, uh, relays. What are they? What do they do? How do they work? Why do we have them? Our bikes are absolutely packed with them. A relay is simply a electromechanical switch. Actually, it's an electromagnetic switch to be more accurate. So why do we need them? In the old days, our four-cylinder gold wings were fairly simple. Now I'm talking about the 1000, the 1100. There wasn't a whole lot of electrical stuff in them. Headlights, uh, charging system, ignition, not much else. So you could get away with having switches that directly actuated the different things. For instance, the headlight switch switching between high beam and low beam, the wire went from the battery to the fuse, to the switch, to the headlight. The switch directly actuated the headlight, turned it on and off, just like a light switch at home. And that was just fine. You could have wires that were thick enough to carry that current, because headlights take a fair bit of current, all the way from the battery through the switch to the headlight. The problem is when you have a more complex bike like this one that has thousands of feet of wire in it. I don't even know how much, but there's a lot of wire in this bike. So if you start running thick wire from the battery to the switches to all the various devices, you are going to be putting a huge amount of wire and weight into that bike. First off, you're not going to have room in the looms to run all that wire. You're going to have looms of wire, you know, the size of your fist running through the bike. And secondly, it's going to weigh a lot because wire is metal and it's heavy. So instead what they do, they run thin wire. But how do you get thin wire to carry enough current to work the headlights, for instance? And that's where relays come in. Relays are basically a switch. It uses electricity to activate that switch. So instead of having a switch you turn on with your finger, electricity turns the switch on and off. What makes the electricity turn on and off? Your switch. So now, because the relay only uses a tiny bit of electricity to actuate itself, we can run a tiny thin wire from the battery up to the, the switch, and then from the switch to the relay. Now the relays can be grouped in an area where we have larger wires that run from there to all the places on the bike that need a lot of current. That means all the controls and, and the wires that go around into the various computers and so on can be tiny because they're not actually carrying a whole lot of current. They're carrying just a tiny amount of current, just enough to trip the magnet inside here that will actuate the switch. The relay then is in a box in a central area that has thick wires that go all over the bike to the places that need a lot of current drawn. So how, is that, how exactly does a relay work? Well, we can get a good look at this relay here. This is not a motorcycle relay. This is not an automotive relay at all. But this relay has a clear cover that lets us see inside it. You can see at the bottom, there's a coil. Now that's basically wire that's wound around, around, around an iron core. And when the, the power runs through that coil, it turns it into an electromagnet. That electromagnet then attracts this switch at the top. And that little tiny arm moves between those two sets of contacts right there. And that either closes or opens the switch, depending on whether the magnet is actuated or not. And at the other end, there is a tiny little spring right there that pulls it back when the magnet turns off. There's another really big relay in here, very high current relay that can handle hundreds of amps. People call it a solenoid because that's what it used to be called in cars, but in reality, it's just another relay, just a big honking one. And that one is used to actuate the starter motor because obviously this tiny little starter switch is not gonna be switching hundreds of amps. So you push that button, it actuates in this bike actually one relay, which then in turn actuates another bigger relay, which then supplies current to the starter motor. Every time the relay opens and closes, there's a little bit of a spark in there. So the relay after a while does tend to wear out. Each time you get that little spark, it's actually melting a tiny bit of the contact. So over time, uh, the contacts will degrade to the point where a relay will either stick open or stick closed. Uh, a very common failure mode for the starter relays in these bikes is where the contact will close and there's a ton of current going through there and that current actually then welds the contacts together sticking the relay on. So even though you let go of the starter button the relay stays on and the starter just keeps running and running and running. 
Now that doesn't hurt the bike. You can run these bikes with the engine running and you can crank the starter. It doesn't hurt it at all because there's a one-way sprag clutch in there. But it does draw a ton of current and it will draw down your battery. And the only way you find out is when you get to your destination, you turn the bike off and you, the starter is either still cranking or it's dead and your battery's dead and now you're stranded. So because they're mechanical devices that do wear out, you do have to think about replacing these because they, they can and do fail. Now, there's a ton of these tiny little Omron relays in there. They're rated for 20 amps, and Honda sells these things for 25 bucks a piece. I thought that's outrageous for a relay. So I decided I'm going to go to Omron and order relays for myself instead of buying them through Honda with their markup, and then I'll resell them to all the Goldwing owners. So I did exactly that. I went to Omron and I bought cases of these relays. This is a number of years ago. And I sold them at half the price, less than half the price. I sold them for $12.95 online on the Goldwing Docs website. I sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And Honda didn't like that. So the next time I ran out of relays and I went to Omron and said, I'd like to order some more relays. Omron said, um, sorry, we're not allowed to sell that to anybody except Honda now, so sorry. So what am I going to do then? I can't get new relays. People came to depend on me as a source of cheap replacement relays for the, the 1500. I went to China. I went to some Chinese factories. Well, I didn't go to China. I used the internet and the telephone. But I talked to a whole bunch of different Chinese factories and I gave them the specs for the relay. And I said, can you make these for me? I got a few samples from a few different companies and picked one that I really thought was the best. The original Omron relay was only rated at 20 amps. The relays that I had made are rated for 40 amps. So most likely these are gonna last a lot longer than the original relays. Now when I got these relays, I didn't just say, yep, looks good, let's sell them. I actually tore them open. I had a look at the insides. I saw how they were constructed. Um, some of the ones I got were pretty shoddy, but these are amazing. Uh, I've now been selling these for probably about three years and I don't think I've heard of a single one failing. So uh, definitely and easily the most popular thing I sell on the Goldwing Docs website. Pretty much anybody that needs these relays gets them from me. I get orders from uh, repair shops. I get orders from Honda dealerships for these things. Some people, they will order them and then they cut the Goldwing Docks part on the bottom, they cut that off, and they package them up, double the price, and sell them on eBay. Uh, I can't really stop them from doing that, but if you want to pay double the price on eBay, you're more than welcome. But goldwingdocks.com is the only place you can get these at the discount price that, that I charge, and I really, I don't make much on this. I, I make enough just to cover my time and effort to put them in a box and ship them out. So, if your 1500 needs relays, and I guarantee it's going to, goldwingdocs.com is the place you want to be. I highly recommend just grabbing a couple, even if you don't need them, because one day you're going to be out riding somewhere, and one of these relays is going to give up the ghost, and you're going to be stranded. So if you have a couple of these in your saddlebag, all you got to do is pop this thing open, replace the relay, off you go, you're good as gold. So next, I'm gonna show you how you actually replace these relays on the 1500. Pardon this rude interruption, but Toby here would like to know if you've subscribed to the Goldwing Docs channel yet. If not, click like and subscribe down below and never miss another one of these perfect videos. Now, back to the video. Now I have a Corbin aftermarket seat on my 1500. You may have an OEM seat, but it's exactly the same taking it on and off. Other than the fact that first, the backrest has to come off. Next, the handle on both sides of the seat has to come off in order to remove the seat. You'll need a little hex driver for that. There's little plugs that fit inside the holes on either side of the handle on both sides. You just pull those out with your fingernail if you haven't already lost them like I have. And then you put your driver in and loosen out the screws. Once the screws are removed, the handle just pulls out the side of the seat. Now I've got a push to talk switch here on mine, so I'll remove that and then put the handle aside. Next, we'll actually remove the seat. First, I want to open the trunk to give the seat some clearance, and then lift the back of the seat, pull it backwards to, to release the seat from the front, and then pull it up. Now I can close the trunk and remove the seat. Next, I'll remove the side panel. 
There's a little place right here you can stick your finger in that little indentation. You want to just pull straight out right there. Release it. And there's a one at the front and then one at the top, at the back. And pull it straight out. Don't pull it up this way because you'll break the posts. You want to release all of the posts and then pull it straight out. Now I have retaining straps on mine so I don't lose mine, so I'll have to undo those. Now you notice there's a, a post here or a boss here, one here, and there should be one here that's broken by the previous owner. Up here we have just a, a grommet that this little metal post here fits into. Right here is our fuse box. In fact, I can just open that up and you can see it. And next to it is the relay box. Now Honda, in a feat of engineering prowess, made it so that the only way you can get into this relay box is by partially removing the saddlebag. Come on, Honda, have your engineers talk to each other. This is one of the most frustrating things about the GL1500 is trying to get into that relay box. Fortunately, we don't have to remove the bag, just loosen it. There's four bolts we have to remove to loosen the bag. So we're gonna open the side. I have a carpet in here, we'll pull that out so we can gain access. Now there's two bolts on the bottom of the bag that we have to remove. One at the back, and one at the front. And there's two bolts on the side that we have to remove. One here at the front, one here at the back. Okay, so now the bag is loose. Now, if I was gonna remove this bag, I'd have to actually disconnect some wires and I'd also have to disconnect the cable that unlatches it from the inside. But we're not gonna actually remove the bag so we can leave that stuff connected. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut the, the door just enough that it holds in place so we're not flopping around. And then supporting it on the bottom, I'll just pull it out gently. And doing that gives me just enough clearance that I can unlatch to remove the relay cover box. Here are my relays. All you have to do to remove a relay is simply pull it straight out. When you have the new replacement, you put it back in. Now you notice there's actually a couple extra fuses hidden in here. They're not extra, they actually run things. If I remember correctly, this is the radio memory fuse. Plug the new relay in, you're good to go. As you might have noticed, cover of the relay box has a label that shows exactly what each relay controls, just like the fuse cover does. Now we've replaced our relay, all we have to do is slide that cover back into place. Make sure you hook it on the bottom first, and then snap it up on the top. Same thing for the fuse box. Now that we've replaced our relay, we can put our bolts back in. Now the holes that these bolts fit into are extremely easy to strip. So it's very important that when you put these bolts back in, you start feeding them in and twist them in by hand. Make sure you have at least two or three good turns by hand before you use a tool to tighten them. That ensures that you're not actually stripping them as you're putting them in. If, like this one, you turn it half away and it just stops and jams, pull it back out, move it a bit, try again. You want to make sure that you can twist it at least two or three full turns in so it's biting before you use a tool. All right, next, I'm gonna reinstall my carpet. I love these carpets, by the way. You can get them for all the different gold wings. They're custom made to fit the trunk and the saddlebags. They keep stuff from rattling around. And it, it, it just looks really nice. Next, I'm gonna reinstall the side cover. Now, like I said before, I have these panel retention straps on here so that if they ever do manage to fall off, I don't lose them forever because these things are scarce and expensive. Now, when I'm installing it, you want to line up the holes, make sure everything looks good. 
and then just give it a gentle push inwards and should just snap right in place. Notice that I didn't twist it up or down. You don't want to put any kind of uh, sideways or bending pressure on those posts because they will just snap right off. You'll notice there's a little tab on the front of the seat that fits into a slot right at the front. But we don't start by putting that in there because we'll, we'll get the back end. So we'll just let, rest the seat down, open the trunk, and we'll slide the seat backwards, get that tab into the slot in the front. And push forward. Now lift the front of the seat, make sure it's actually in the slot. Close the trunk. Seat's back installed. Now we install the handles. Now these handles can be a bit of a pain. The screws don't actually line up exactly with the holes in the seat and the hole in the frame. They have aftermarket screws that you can buy that actually have a point on the end to help guide it and center it as it's going in. I don't take the seat off enough to warrant spending that money on that feature, but if, if you do and it bothers you, you can do that. So you fit the, the handle into place. And these are more screws that are rather easy to strip out and you don't want to do that because you're actually screwing right into the frame and it's very hard to, to repair. So if you start pushing it in, and it's not actually going in. You want to try to like move the seat around a bit. There we go. And you can tell when it just starts to slot in. Now again, you'll notice I'm turning this with my fingers. I'm not cranking it in place. That way I know I haven't cross-threaded it. And then do the same thing on the back. Sometimes I have to really punch and move the, and just kind of wiggle the seat around in order to get the holes to line up and the, the screw to start biting and going in. Now once it's screwed in all the way, just give it a good amount of torque to tighten it in place. And onto the other handle. And lastly, the seat back. You may or may not have this. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. And if you do have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. Of course, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Not only does it help us out greatly, you'll never miss another video. Well, my bike's ready to go. I have a brand new relay in it. All I need now is for the snow to go away. Don't forget to check out goldwingdocs.com, the largest and best Goldwing forum on the internet and the only place where you can buy these high quality, half price Goldwing relays.